Pakistan. Uh, welcome back to Corporate Governance and today we're going to talk about uh, listed companies regulations. This is a very important uh, aspect of Corporate Governance. We've been looking at uh, the various dimensions, perspectives uh, and again the various indulations and undulations uh, related to Corporate Governance and now we've come to the listed companies uh, regulations. Now when we talk about the different disclosures of uh, significant policies then it's very important that they should be on the company website so that everyone is aware and basically in the context of freedom of information it has become even more significant and also based upon the Securities and Exchange Commission uh, of Pakistan uh, different laws uh, and when we are talking about the listed companies then definitely uh, their responsibility goes to a higher order because uh, the shares uh, are open to the market and they have a very broad shareholder base and therefore anyone investing in that particular company has to be very well aware of how things are being done and what is being done in that particular company. So the first and foremost policy is about communication and disclosure policies and that is what I was basically talking about that unless something is secret or is about a product and they don't want to share the contents of those of that product or those products then there has to be uh, freedom of information and availability of information to the sh shareholders and also to the stakeholders so that they can take appropriate decisions while engaging with the company. Similarly, when we're talking about the board of directors, then there is a code of conduct which has to be followed uh, and also for the senior management and the other employees of the listed company. There has to be a risk management policy, internal control policies and whistleblowing policies. Nowadays, uh, in the context of corporate governance and good governance, whistleblowing is a very, very important aspect. But again, what we see is, is that even though uh, good organizations have these policies, and in many times even the multinational companies have these policies, but unfortunately, they do not follow them or they are not implemented in letter and spirit. So there is a policy, but its implementation is lacking, and that creates a lot of confusion and a lot of ambiguity and a lot of obstacles for any employee to become a whistleblower because usually unfortunately what happens is is that when someone blows the whistle then rather than the other people against whom the whistle has been blown and the evidence has been given and the investigation has been conducted the repercussions or a more appropriate word of retaliation basically takes place against the whistleblower and in that particular case many times we see that that the whistleblower has to suffer financially has to suffer socially and also has to suffer domestically because uh, he or she is usually terminated from employment and has to bear the brunt uh, of the different uh, levels of management because uh, he or she is considered to be a person who has damaged the company. While actually in the long run, the whistleblower is saving the company from future embarrassment. So whistleblowing policies are extremely important. There has to be whistleblower protection and there also has to be a proper way of investigating any complaint from a particular whistleblower. The risk management and internal control policies have been talked about earlier in many of our sessions so I'll move forward and the next one is the corporate social responsibility, sustainability, environment, social and governance related policy. So what we see is that nowadays uh, CSR is becoming a very important aspect and dimension of good governance and corporate governance and therefore uh, whatever CSR is being done that also has to be uh, disclosed in the best possible way. How is it going to be made sustainable? What are the issues related to environment and the social and governance related policies become very important and they are integrated into each other so that they do not stand alone. And when we are talking about uh, corporate social responsibility, then it's very important that the company does not allocate those funds uh, for their own activities. What we have been seeing is that under the guise of corporate social responsibility, the company is actually doing marketing and that is immoral, that is incorrect and that is illegal. So it should not be done like that. It should be for the benefit of the community, for the benefit of the society and again should be done without any vested interest uh, in the activities or in the projects that are being undertaken uh, under the banner of corporate social responsibility. If we look at the brief sign of or terms of reference of the board committee, then we talk about the audit committee, we talk about HR and remuneration policies, we talk about the nomination committee and also the risk management committee. Again, a very important aspect is the key elements of directors 
and remuneration policies. Now, when we are looking at all of these, then a very important aspect is conflict of interest. So, in either of these different committees or policies, there should be no conflict of interest, there should be no gray areas, it should be empirical in context, it should be well defined, it should be well structured, and it should be merit oriented, and uh, the maximum protection should be given against nepotism and favoritism, so that there is no compromise uh, in the governance structure and management structure of a particular organization. So, what we see ladies and gentlemen, is that uh, in listed companies, there is a greater need to disclose, and there is a greater need to have freedom of information, and there is a greater need to provide information to the stakeholders and the shareholders, so that appropriate uh, decision making can be done, free decision making can be done, and people are not misled or uh, left into gray areas of ambiguity, and there can be more clarity in the decision making, uh, both within the organization and outside the organization. Thank you so much.